have a look at the premium of uh, with Finley and first of all, what's new? Well, our focus this year is still on sustainability. Uh, over the last couple of years, we've managed to reduce the amount of single-use plastic by about 100 tonnes uh, a year by uh, introducing the, the larger uh, cartons, the plant-based cartons, that, that is. So the other challenge is uh, maintaining the sustainability of the farms and the only way that we can do that is by paying the farmers a, a good price for their, their milk and uh, that, that has proven a, a challenge this, this year but we're certainly uh, managing to achieve it by getting new customers uh, in, in a variety of uh, markets and uh, pushing the business forward that way. And how have you found the business post-Covid because obviously there's a bit of a natural reaction there from an inwards and we all started looking at what we were buying and where it was coming from. Are you finding that still not the, the first week of COVID was extremely worrying uh, for us because there were uh, some key bits of business that just stopped overnight, like the airline business, which was good, uh, high margins, that stopped overnight, and also that some of the high-end uh, delicatessen business stopped overnight as supermarkets in the States stopped having deli uh, counters for the cheese, and all cheese was going to be pre-packed. So there were bits and pieces that disappeared overnight. But what we, what we did gain was uh, more than 2,500 new customers on the Isle of Man who wanted their, their milk delivered. And in the space of a, a month, we onboarded 2,500 customers. And I'm pleased to say that we have got uh, most of them still as customers, which I think is testament to a great team that we've got here. Great service. Um, it doesn't cost people any more money to have their milk delivered than it does to, uh, to buy in a, in a shop. So, um, it, we, in some, some ways, we did gain from that, although it's a more expensive channel to market for us. And uh, obviously, it's local produce, it's local farmers, you know, it's probably the place, place in the world you're most likely to know where your, your milk's actually come from, where your cheese has come from. But you've also moved to the global market, and that's most of us from the cheese side of things. Yes. Uh, we make approximately 2,000 tonnes of cheese uh, every, every year on the Isle of Man and it's all made from Manx milk. Uh, we, we can't really import any of the, the raw material, so it's all from milk produced on the Isle of Man. Um, so it amounts to about 2,000 tonnes uh, a year. Now, we consume about 300 tonnes on the Isle of Man. So that is from the, the retail packs that you'll see in the supermarket or the convenience store to you know, the, the key ingredient of the national dish, cheese, cheese chips and gravy, um, you know, that's sold through uh, catering outlets. Um, so that amounts to about 300 tonnes, which leaves us about 1,700 tonnes uh, a year to export. And those exports initially were all to the, the UK. Uh, but as uh, the UK market got tighter and tighter and more consolidated into the hands of four main retailers, it became much more difficult for small manufacturers like Isle Man Creamery uh, to make a decent margin from the cheese sold there. So uh, we had to look further afield and uh, probably about 15 years ago we got our first export custom uh, which was into uh, Spain. Prior to that it had been the UK and Ireland but uh, we, we, we got control with a, a very, very good uh, distributor in Spain that we met at a trade show and uh, within a year uh, they were selling the equivalent of about 50 or 60 tonnes uh, a year um, to uh, the, the coastal areas of Spain and the Balearic Islands and the Canary Islands. So they covered all of those uh, territories uh, on our behalf and it was, it was a real pleasure and a real boost uh, to, to our, our staff when people would say uh, to them uh, oh, I saw your, your cheese in Spain, or I saw, saw your cheese halfway up a mountain in a little village in Mallorca, or, or whatever. So, <laughs> it's, it's not advertised, man. Go find things, you can find our cheese. Exactly, exactly. So, it was, uh, um, as well as um, being more profitable for us, uh, and having an opportunity for that, it was, it was all also a, a, a little bit of prestige uh, as, as well. Uh, but we developed from there, and uh, again through attending trade shows and contacting uh, distributors in the, in the States. Um, we, we got our first sale there in about 2008 and uh, that has, I'm pleased to say, uh, 
that very first customer uh, has grown and grown uh, with us uh, over the years and continues to account for almost half of our premium branded exports uh, to, to this day. So which is like the most surprising like furthest away country that Manx cheese is being shipped out to and sold? Geographically, possibly the, the furthest away uh, market that we, we're in is Australia and uh, we're selling into a, 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 a large uh, retailer there um, and that, that goes through a, a distributor um, to, to get there. But in terms of the most unusual and surprising uh, market that we've got is uh, we got an order in, uh, in March uh, from Rwanda of all places in, uh, in Central Africa and that was definitely not a market that we were looking for but by attending a, a trade show uh, you're opening yourself up to uh, approaches from, from all over the world literally and uh, this uh, company approached us and said there is a, a niche market in Central Africa that they were serving from, uh, from Rwanda and of course we were very suspicious and we uh, did all sorts of checks on the company and we got our money up front, front rather than risking um, our, our, our money and uh, yeah, it, it was a, a, literally a ton of cheese went to, went to Rwanda and it's being enjoyed in high class hotels in, uh, in Central Africa now. That's quite a story, really. <laughs> so is that something you're looking to grow in, in, in the market, or is it sort of maybe a one-off, or I think it's been planned? We would hope that we'll, we'll start getting repeat uh, orders. I don't think it's going to be uh, a massive market, and I think there's lower-lying fruit in, in all our areas. Um, I think there's some opportunities in the, uh, in the United Kingdom, which is closer to home, that we can uh, try and exploit. And uh, we've, we've also uh, got some opportunities in, in the United States that we can build on as well. You know, we've got one very big customer uh, there, and we've got a, a string of very small customers uh, as well. Uh, but I think we could do with uh, getting one other biggie uh, out there. So when you go to trenches, how does that work? Do you have government funding towards them? So those schools in there, you're, yes, you're selling your company product, but you're also sort of flying a Manx flag around the world. Does that get assistance from the state at all? It, it does. We're, uh, we're very fortunate, I think, on the Isle of Man that uh, we, we've got a, uh, quite a forward-looking uh, department for enterprise and uh, they do help us with uh, some trade shows. Uh, when I say help us, they'll, they'll provide a, a reasonable percentage of expenses like the, uh, the hire of the, uh, of the stand space at, at the trade show and maybe some help with the, the graphics uh, at, that we use at the trade show. And uh, I, th I think they will see a return on that you know, when, we, uh, when we achieve new customers and we, we start uh, selling into new markets. Uh, it, it makes the, the business that we have more secure and therefore uh, the, the return for the taxpayer is more secure.